Hello, welcome to another make along here with me. I'm Rosanna. Today I want to show you how to make a little chick figurine um, out of cotton fibers. Um, it's, it's almost springtime here in the northern hemisphere and some of you might have um, decorated eggs out around your house and you might want some little chicks to go with those and I'm going to show you that you don't need to go to the store and buy any plastic things. Um, you can you can make a little kind of antique vintage style chick with some really simple and expensive materials most of which you probably already have around your house. So um, let's get going. I'm going to go through the supply list with you. So what you're going to need is um, cotton fibers. So this can be cotton balls, it can be quilt batting, it can be um, little, the you know, the cotton fluff that they put in the top of a pill or a vitamin bottle, supplement bottle. So any kind of cotton fiber that you can get your hands on. You can order um, special cotton fibers online too that are specifically for spun cotton projects, but you don't have to. You need masking tape, foil, I use used foil from chocolate bars, tissue paper possibly if you don't have foil. Um, you might need pipe cleaners or wire, paint brushes, you're going to need PVA glue or school glue, um, and then paint of some sort. Hi, I'm Rosanna. Um, I'm an artist and maker, and um, I live in southeast Nebraska with my five-year-old daughter um, on a small animal sanctuary, kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I've been coming to you for a few months doing um, making make-along vid videos. Um, we've done all spun cotton up until this point. Well, and we're still going to do spun cotton today. <laughs> um, I just had the idea. It's been um, really spring-like the last few weeks here in Nebraska after that terrible cold we all had. Um, we've had then unseasonably warm um, temperatures and so all the animals have been out happy um, acting like spring and then we've had um, windy, rainy, yuck the last few days and so it kind of popped into my head that maybe it was time to make a little kind of spring decoration. So I've been making chicks the last few days um and this is actually a pretty quick um spun cotton craft compared to maybe some of the the last two that i did um i think you could do a chick like this in maybe like 30 minutes of active time and then some drying time maybe an hour at the most i think to make a little chick um especially if you've got some little bits and bobs to decorate with or you could just leave her plain um like that but i kind of went for an antique look with these and so i just wanted to show you how easy it is to um make a little uh decoration spring eastery decoration like this um and so i thought we would do that together today so um let's get going Okay, so what I get questions about most are my materials, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Here's the chick I started with. Um, I tried, I, I oftentimes do things really tiny, but today I thought, let's make a chick that looks like it could actually have come out of a, you know, a chicken egg, which is what most of us have um, for our, our decorated eggs, or, you know, it might not be an actual chicken egg, but the size might be wooden, but this about the size of a chicken egg. So I, this is probably a, a little bit smaller than what would actually hatch out, although it doesn't look like anything bigger than that could fit an egg. But anyway, the real chicks are squashier than what we're making today. But so I get lots of questions about materials. I love to use um, and repurpose as many materials as I can. So I, I literally always start with chocolate bar wrappers that I've saved. Um, I eat a lot of chocolate. I have a shoebox in my um, wardrobe full of chocolate bar wrappers that I save. 
I use um, cotton balls like from the drugstore that you get for 99 cents. I use the fluff out of the top of supplement bottles. I have, this is like batting that came out of a sofa that we took apart. So I, I don't get anything fancy and you don't need to get anything fancy either. Um, I've got chenille or, you know, uh, covered wire or pipe cleaners from the thrift store and then just your regular standard school glue and I mix that with water so in that dish is about a quarter to a third of a cup of water and a tablespoon or maybe a little bit more of glue um, oh and you can also use if you don't have foil you can use tissue paper it's just a little bit harder to work with so I'm starting here with what will be the legs and feet of our little chick. I'm just looping the wire over in the middle. And then I'm just going to bend the feet. I take one small, maybe like, I don't know, an inch long. So that'd be like two centimeters or something. Um, I take another little piece and I loop the end of my wire around it to catch it and make... It's not a real chick foot because they actually have a little um, toe or whatever that sticks off the back. So we're just doing three toes today because that was a little bit simpler. Feet, um, wire feet for chickens are kind of tricky. And this was as simple as I thought we could do. You can do it where you um, wrap the wire with like tape, with florist tape or with masking tape. And you can do a more complex foot that way. But I didn't want to spend that much time wrapping wire with you today so that's something you can do on your own time and I'm sure you can even find tutorials about um, making wire bird feet on YouTube here so um, that's definitely something you could spend a little more time with but that's this is kind of our simple version we're doing today then you just take your foil and um, you can use um, your cooking foil too as long as it's fairly clean just maybe tear off the the bits of it that aren't as clean and use the cleaner parts of used cooking foil I do that sometimes but I don't use a lot of foil for cooking and then you just start squashing your foil around your little wire legs and making the chick shape um, I don't squash it really tight because I there's no reason to use a lot more foil than what you need. Um, but sometimes if you aren't getting your shape right, you'll end up using a little more foil. Um, like for this one, I ended up using more foil than I sometimes do. And you could also start with a little bit of tissue paper first and then wrap the foil around it. So there's lots of ways to um, start with your shape and... Um, Kind of bulk it out this is just the reason I do this and not just um, some people would like start with the with the pipe cleaner legs or whatever and then they would just start wrapping dry cotton into a shape which you can do if you have a lot of cotton fibers um, I don't have a ton I have a lot of batting but that doesn't necessarily wrap very easily so anyway this is why I start with um, a different material for the base of my figures so I'm just getting it into the shape I want and always kind of keep in mind that you don't necessarily want it the size that you're looking for at the end because we're going to cover this foil with tape masking tape and then we're gonna do our coat of cotton and you know depending on how well you do with your first layer of cotton you might have to add more layers to smooth it out so it's going to get bigger as you go so um, I didn't do a great job actually with these of stain at the scale of my original chick I have her there to kind of um, look at and compare these two but they both ended up a little bigger than she was so um, just something to keep in mind because there's not really a good way once you've got your cotton on to um, to change the size it's kind of just the way it is so then I just start covering with masking tape you don't have to cover every little bit of foil 
but the cotton doesn't stick very well to the foil. It, it covers better over the masking tape, so just um, cover it as well as you can and try to um, smooth it out and get it stuck down fairly well so that you don't have a lot of kind of square edges because um, that'll just require more more coverage with your cotton later so just do do your best when you're um, making your armature shape and covering it with masking tape because that will save you time down the road with the cotton portion so you can see it it's looking chick like already and that's what you kind of are going for with your armatures um, if it still looks like a blob when you're done, if it doesn't have like any <laughs> resemblance to what you're making, it's gonna be a lot harder to turn it into something with the cotton. Um, so if you can get it to, you know, as a, as a masking tape creature, if it has a little resemblance to what you're making, um, you're on the right track. And then I'm using a little bit of tissue here because I thought the head was still a little small. So I'm just, the tissue, as I said, um, is a little harder to keep in the place you want it until you get it taped down, but I've just been using it because um, I've got a lot of used tissue paper, it's not recyclable, and um, it doesn't take very much of it to give you a lot of volume and bulk, so that's why I'm using it. We're almost almost ready here with our little chick it's um it's what they call in our farm stores around here um i don't even know if you you might not be in an area where you have what you call farm stores but it's where you can buy we have this little animal sanctuary and you can buy pet food you know for your dogs and cats but you can buy um you know chicken feed and supplements and different things for goats or horses or whatever so in our farm stores it's what they call chick days right now in March and um I I loved that and hated that when I was a kid because you'd go into the store and you could hear the cheeping right when you um when the doors would open you know cheep, 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 from the back of the store and so you know the kids run back there right away and I <laughs> and I loved animals and I still love animals but um always always in those big they keep the chicks in these galvanized they're like um horse waters really but they put wood chips in and a little heat lamp and their chicks are just you know there's 50 or 100 chicks in each one and which is you know exciting and cute but if you then if you really start looking there's always there's always a sick chick or one that's leg got hurt or and that's what I would always see as a kid and then I would end up being really sad um and not anyway the, this, is, this is a story of, of my childhood as an um animal empath I guess you would call me someone who was always drawn to animals but really um sympathetically um kind of suffering with them a lot so anyway um chick days are not my favorite thing now as an adult um of course my daughter loves to see the little chicks and it's really sweet on the surface but um there's don't i don't know i don't want to preach but um it's really tempting sometimes to uh to buy into that cuteness and just um buy your chicks there but i don't know i just I don't like to support something like that where they truck in hundreds and thousands of chicks and half of them are not going to get taken home anywhere and then what do they do with those chicks? I've seen some, personally, I've even seen some um, really disturbing things in the back of a store. So anyway, um, just something to think about and maybe a good reason to make a little cotton chick for for your for a child in your life um and also to think about as a parent I definitely think now with Nettie and I make sure that I look at the chicks first and and know that there's not going to be a tragedy that she's seen because um some of those things that happen with when you're a kid um really stay with you um but maybe that's why 
<laughs> we rescue chickens now. Um, so maybe, you know, good things come out of that. But anyway, um, that was my little tangent about chick days at the farm okay. store. So we're just um, covering, let me talk about what we're actually doing here. We're just covering our armature with cotton. I always use a paintbrush. Now I started out just using my fingers and that's definitely doable, especially when you're keeping your glue watery enough. Um, it's not too sticky. And I, you can definitely um, try it with your fingers and dip the cotton in your, you know, glue water mixture um, and just lay it on and smooth it with your fingers and see how that goes. But I just prefer now to use the paintbrush for most of it. You can see here I'm... Um, I'm using my fingers some, and you, like, um, you'll want to use your fingers probably to pinch a little beak and do things like that, or to, if you've got some tape that's kind of poking up and making, like, a sharp little, um, point, um, you can use your fingers still at this point and kind of crunch that down and cover it with cotton, um, so that's something you can look out for here at this point, too, is you can still kind of manipulate the shape of whatever you're making and squash things around if you need to. Um, but once it's dried the first time, it's a little bit harder. You can still get it wet and mess with it a little bit, but um, it's easiest to fix some of those things right now as you're seeing them. Um, so we're just getting a little, you can see how I'm um, tearing my batting apart. Um, I'm not doing super, super thick pieces of it because I, I kind of, if you, if you can't get all of it, like if you're putting it on and the watery glue isn't really soaking through most of it, I think that's a little too thick because I think you are possibly not going to have it stuck down very well once it dries. So I like to do pieces that are maybe like, I would say not more than a millimeter thick of the batting. Um, if that makes sense, just kind of fairly thin. And a lot of what I'm doing is a lot thinner than that. But um, that's kind of an idea of, of how I lay on my cotton. And I, um, I do either dip, when I'm first putting a layer of cotton on, I either dip the piece a little bit in the watery glue or I paint a little bit of the watery glue on to the masking tape part first underneath just to give it a little bit of extra um, adhesion I guess you would say. So now I'm just kind of going around I think I've got cotton on all of this chick and I'm just kind of using my brush to apply a little pressure and um, smooth out any little lumps that have shown up and I don't this is not perfect you'll see when I do more I mean and you can see right now that this is still fairly lumpy. I don't go for like, um, some people make like really beautiful, um, it's just so smooth. Their spun cotton stuff is like, um, it almost looks like porcelain or ceramic or something. I don't ever get that effect partly because I'm not using that particular kind of cotton fiber that would give you that effect. Like this quilt batting I have, um, is really rough. It's um, not nearly as um, uniform, I guess, in its texture as like what you can buy at the store now. This is like old out of a piece of furniture, so it's um, got, it's just got lumps and it's got pieces of, of the cotton plant in it. So anyway, it's just not going to give me a really um, smooth finish, but I, I kind of like that because as, as I was talking about um, I want these to look kind of antique and primitive, um, like folk art, like something that someone made with just whatever they had, which is, which is what I'm doing and which might be what you're doing. So I think that definitely is folk art and it's going to, it's going to look like that in some ways. So, um, so now I'm just giving her some little... Um, a little extra, I guess, for the wings is what I would say. A little extra little bump there. Um, making sure that I've got a nice amount of cotton around the pipe cleaner so that you don't have kind of a gap there. And there, you know, 
I think that I did only basically one layer of cotton on these chicks because I wanted these to go really quickly. Um, but you can definitely, if you don't get everything the way you want it, you can do two or three or four, however many layers of cotton you need to do, just making sure that, um, that your figurine is pretty much dry in between those layers so that you know it's really going to get completely dry eventually. I always put mine um, on the heating vent <laughs> um, to speed up the drying a little bit. We're getting out of the heating season now, so I'm not going to have that option for a while, but um, some people put theirs in a warm oven to speed up drying, just kind of heat it up to 150 or 200 or whatever the lowest temperature is um, and then set it in there on a little plate or something to dry or some people um, use like if they have a food dehydrator they'll use that so um, those are options if you want to speed this up to a you know I think it takes like 45 minutes I'm I think I did this one in in basically 30 minutes but I'm like I'm estimating it might take you a little longer um, but if you actually wanted to get it done with the dry time and everything in one afternoon, um, you might have to get creative about how you dry it. So this little chickie's almost done. And then I will probably um, speed up the painting process so that this video can come in around 30 minutes is my goal. So like I said, you just let her dry, um, and then we'll come back in and do painting, which is really pretty simple. For, and then you're also going to have to fiddle to get her balance right, um, to get her to stand. But usually if you get them tipped just right, it'll work. Now, if you don't want to do the feet, don't want to worry about getting them balanced and wrapping or you know and twisting the wire or whatever I will show you um, when I do the painting I'll show you how to do um, a chick on a little just cardboard piece pedestal so there there we've got one little chicky done and I'll probably do a couple more to show you um, one that doesn't have the feet and just can little stand on a little base. Just getting her all squashed into her nicest, nicest shape. Okay, time for painting. It was a really dark, rainy day um, for this, so the lighting is just not going to be as as good as I would like to show you. Um, the paint and the colors, um, especially since I didn't do really bright, dark colors. Um, it might be a little hard to see, but we'll just do our best. And I did forget to mention, I'm trying, if you've watched any of my other make-alongs, I'm trying a little different camera angle today. Um, well, I guess let me know what you think. You might be watching this on my website. In that case, you kind of have to click through onto YouTube to leave comments. But if you're on YouTube and you have an opinion about, um, you know, how this angle works for seeing what I'm doing, if you like it better or if you like the original, which is more from this side, let me know because um, I'm not sure. I, you know, because I know what I'm doing. So when I watch, I'm not sure which is easier um, to really see the detail. One thing I don't like about, um, from the top is that my camera kept kind of doing an auto adjust for focusing. And for me, that's a little irritating. <laughs> so if you're irritated by that too, I guess let me know and we might go back to the side shot because it doesn't do so much adjusting that way. Um, so what I'm using today for paints is just acrylic craft paint you can find that um a lot at a lot of places i mean you can go to a like an art supplier craft store but you can also find it probably at walmart or target i mean i get mine sometimes at the walmart we have in town 
Um, you can find more colors, you know, obviously at a craft supply store, but um, I'm just using an off-white for kind of my base coat of paint. And on this one I wanted to show you, I've taped the pipe cleaners to a cardboard base and then I've added just a few little pieces of fabric. I've just hot glued those on for some wings. Um, and then I will just paint all of that. I, I actually will cover the base with cotton later, but I'm just showing you the painting of the actual chick um, for right now. But anyway, with my craft paint, I just always get it really watery because um, I've talked about this before, but I just like to be able to see um, the cotton fibers through the paint. So if you do a really thick coat of the craft paint you will get more of a hard finish where um, the paint kind of sits on the top and so you might not necessarily see or be able to tell so much that it's cotton and that's like totally fine if you want to do it that way and um, go ahead. I just like to have my paint more watery so that it absorbs into the cotton and you can still see the cotton through the paint so I just I don't like it as opaque as what a what regular acrylic craft paint would be so I just water it down is probably half paint and half water I would say um, that just is what I like right now um, so I'm just doing this off-white base and um, I'm adding I'm showing how you can add a little bit of fiber with just the paint so if you want to smooth something out or even I mean I really like the way the fiber the cotton fiber looks with the paint over it it's really a soft look because there's no glue mixed in to kind of look the glue will um, make it look a little bit harder you can just tell that it's kind of sealed some of the cotton but if you just do a really thin layer of cotton fiber and paint it on with the paint um, it's just I don't know it's a really soft pretty look to me it looks like I used to sometimes see a spun cotton figurine in the antique store and I didn't know really what I was seeing I thought maybe it was some sort of um, weird paper mache but I think I was seeing spun cotton figurines just occasionally um, and that's what I think it looks like um, when you do a little top coat of fiber under your paint. So anyway, that's something you can do that if you want to smooth out your shape a little bit more or just give it a little bit different um, look. That's, that's something that I like to do if I have a little time. So um, what I'm going to do now is just completely coat her with this off-white paint. I'm going to speed it up a little bit here and then I'll come back in with what I'm going to do for the yellow today is you could use acrylic um, craft paint but I'm going to use some of my watercolor to do some little yellow accents. You could also, I thought of this later, you could use like the spice turmeric if you wanted to. I think that would work really well and maybe give you a really interesting effect. But anyway, that's an experiment you could try and that I will probably try with another chick here um, in the next week or so. But anyway, I'm going to um, speed up my video a little bit. Okay, so we've got this at double speed now, which I know looks really um, bizarre kind of, but, <laughs> but I really want to keep this video shorter for you. Um, so here we go. Um, still adding a little bit of fiber, almost done with my um, original base coat. And this time I did do something different. In the past, I've told you to let it dry after this first coat of paint. But today, since we were trying to do it um, a little faster, and because of, of um, kind of the effect that I wanted to get with the paint, we're going to paint um, over this, or at least I'm going to paint over this first coat of acrylic paint with watercolor while it's still wet. So here I'm just adding a few little like tan beige, um, act like I'm doing the beak with a little bit of tan and the legs with a little bit of tan paint. Um, and then 
I'm just going to use my watercolors. So I've just got some like yellow ochre or something like that that I'm just um, going to take a nice wet brush and start adding some yellow accents just because I wanted it to look kind of patchy and blotchy and not just super uniform because chicks are like when you see them you know they're kind of different shades of white and pale yellow and brighter yellow and also because I wanted it to just look sort of aged and faded so this isn't a really bright yellow chick I mean you saw the original one she's not a super sunny yellow but um you know do just do do what is going to make you happy to do this is just how I was doing it today and you can see like um I hope someone tries like turmeric and sees what it I mean what I would do is I would just do my um probably acrylic paint base although you wouldn't have to you could just go over your cotton fiber with a little turmeric and water or a little turmeric and glue and water and just kind of experiment I think I'm gonna try it and see what that um, is like, I just, I like the idea of using natural things or, you know, um, not, not necessarily bought in, well, I mean, you have to buy the turmeric, but I guess I mean like a, a product, e product, it's nice to use something that you might already have and not have to buy in a little plastic bottle or whatever. Um, so I've just added some yellow accents to her. And then we'll let her dry, and I'll show you how to do the eyes, which I get a lot of questions about. So here we're going to, I'm um, hopefully, we'll see how this came out with this kind of camera angle, but I hope you'll be able to see how I do eyes a little better, because outside of materials, that's what I get questions about a lot, is um, people have trouble with eyes, which I totally understand, and um, I am not an eye expert I just um do my best um but like that's a benefit of acrylic paint is you can paint over or paint out an eye if you um really don't like what you've done so I just um I usually put a chick or a chicken's eyes just a tiny bit higher than the beak and not very far back from the beak and in fact these might these eyes might be farther back than a real chick or hen's eyes I you know you always feel free to go off of photos I probably should have um, but sometimes then when I've got a photo of the actual animal I get really literal about copying it and it doesn't end up being as folky as I would like so um, I, I just kind of went off of my own sort of instinct and and memory or recollection for these um, and we're not we're not necessarily trying to be actually um, literal in our interpretation and let you know unless you want to be and then go ahead <laughs> but um, this is kind of just the idea of a chick um, oh, and then I'm also making a little smiley beak here I don't use like I kind of water down the black so that it's dilute a little bit so that you don't just get like a really hard black line. Um, but there again, it's, you know, play around and do what you want and you can always paint over it if you've got acrylic paint. Um, so I've got my little eye, black eye dots and then I will go in and do a little touches, of, um, do some little touches of white for the kind of sparkle um, you know, life, more lifelike effect. I just always like a little sparkle in an eye. It just, I don't know, it gives, I feel like it gives a little personality, um, but definitely it's not probably, that's where I think my stuff doesn't look quite as primitive is because I add little details like that, so I don't know, we're, we all contradict ourselves. So I've just added a little, some little dabs of white um, in the black, and I'm not sure that you can really see it, and I can't remember if I, oh, and then I also, like, get my brush a little watery with some white, and just add a few highlights on the top of the head and beak, um, and you can see I've covered my base now with cotton. I'm still waiting, because I think I do hold her up to see if I can get, yeah, 
we're gonna have to wait till this last part okay so here I'll show you how um, these little chicks turned out and hopefully in this shot you can kind of see their eyes and some of the details a little better so there's our little chick who's got a base and I gave her some flowers to hold. You're welcome to use whatever you've got. I made these flowers from little fabric scraps and hot glue and then I paint them, which is really fun I find. But if you've got milliner's flowers or um, some sort of small artificial flower around, you can do something like that. Um, it's not hard to, to make them really if you get started. And then there, there's our little forget-me-not chick with her little garland of flowers and a little bow. And then we've got a little black spotted chick, which um, has a little flower crown. I tried to do just kind of primitive little polka dots on her. Um, it's always hard to um, get a good look at an animal with black fur or feathers I just think they're so hard to photograph um but I tried and I do like her in person it's just hard to see her especially since it was so dark this day um but there we've got our little chicks and um hopefully you want to try making some yourself so thank you for making with me today and I'll see you next time happy making